Hello guys and welcome back to the Motor Recon Podcast. I'm your host Adam. I'm joined again today by Rob. And um, what we're going to do today is, because we've seen a lot of stuff about this on the internet and sort of um, quite a few mixed reviews actually I've seen, but we're going to look at the Mark 8 Golf and a couple of its rivals, sort of what we, th- well, what we think would compete with it and generally what is perceived to compete with it. Uh, and also we are going to discuss sort of the SUV craze that's going on at the moment. I know we've briefly touched on it before. Um, but we just want to update it a little bit from our previous episode. So, just to kick off, uh, obviously the Volkswagen Golf, probably one of the most famous hatchbacks of all time. I think they've sold more of them than they've sold... I think it's probably the hatchback, Any is other, it? Yeah, if, if, if you think of a hatchback, generally, you think of a Golf. Exactly, I think it started this. Yeah, yeah the, ori- really, yeah, the original yeah. Golf sort of started... Well, I don't think it started the hatchback, but it was... It certainly started the hot hatch. I think the Mark One Golf GTI is probably yeah. where it all became really sort of famous. But, um, obviously, it's been quite a long time. They're now just about to release, in 2020, the Mark Eight. Yes. The eighth generation of probably one of the, say, the most famous cars of all time. Um, now, for me, initially, just looking at the styling of the car, what do you think compared, for, especially coming from what we've had in the past? Prettier at the back, uglier at the front. Yeah, I think generally I would agree with you on that one. I quite like the headlights, not going to lie, but I don't like the new front grille, so the line going over the front grille. I think it's softer. Yeah, it's very squashed at the front. I think it's, ironically, um, yeah, I actually prefer the 7 styling, to be honest. Yes, I, I do prefer the 7, like you say, but apart from at the rear. Yeah, no, that's the thing. I think they've done a great job on the rear. I think the front, the trouble is, maybe they felt like they had to do something. Yeah, just just to, to make it, it different, but I don't really see where they could have gone from the previous one to make it styling wise any no, better. The, even the normal ones, but quite an aggressive lot of sort of styling with the headlights and things. Before I think it's quite an understated design anyway, and I don't. Th- I think or I, I mean, it's not a pretty car as such. The old one yeah, was not meant to be. Pretty. That's the thing. It's, it's not meant, meant to just to be. be a little bit more utilitarian. I think, well, isn't the, it? the lot the lot of things I've seen in many reviews over the years of many different golfs is just that if you want a car that does much everything and does it well yeah and does it well yeah just get a golf yeah no and I, I'd, I'd agree i mean and that is historically what it has been given yeah. but as we'll go into in this it now has serious rivals yeah very yeah. serious rivals now the new one obviously the main place i think they have updated it and really gone to town is the interior yes definitely. they've absolutely gone to town on the interior now they, they've put anything you can think of so they've got now full digital display yeah I don't know whether that is standard across all models or if it is just on the higher ones. Yeah. But I know Audi are putting it as standard on even like all of the A1s. So I'm pretty sure given they are the same company, it'll now start to be standard across the board on these. Um, it's also got random little things like uh, you can get Wi-Fi on it, but it's got a thing where it connects to ro- Wi-Fi road signs and does the speed. Yep. Um, it's got a heads-up display. Yes, it has. Very true. Which, again, pretty cool. And apparently, the interior space, as far as practicality is concerned, is very di- isn't different at all from no, the well, Seven. Really, the, the, it is exactly the same underpinnings as the Mark Seven. So I think it will drive very much the same. The space is very much the same. Um, but that being said, I mean, there wasn't all that much wrong with the 7, though. I understand where they're coming from in no. the respect of... I know the whole point of the car industry is to continuously innovate, but at the same token, the 7 was still more than holding its own with the competitors oh, anyway. Yeah, completely. So why reinvent the wheel? Yeah, and the, the, I think Volkswagen know that no matter what, really, this car's just going to sell. Um so I, I don't so, I don't really see why. One would. of the things I'm particularly interested in is um, obviously now mild hybrid technology has arrived onto the Golf. So this is something that obviously we have discussed previously um, as being something we've seen in the uh, sort of the premium end. Well, the more premium end, like you've been seeing it on Mercs and you've been seeing it on Audis for a yeah, little while. Yeah, and Jags now. and Beamers. And it, it, like exactly. That, yeah. and it, it's but this has finally filtered itself down to sort of like the humble hatchback. So um, that should improve efficiency, which is good to know. Um, however, the one thing we were surprised at is obviously, well, it's a 48 volt uh, starter generator attached to a lithium ion battery. Um, again, it pr- improves for fuel consumption. So it's pretty yeah. straightforward. That, it also only adds an extra 16 brake horsepower. So it's, not, that, it's not it, but it will but probably. But that's not, so that's not what it's there for. No, is it? it's it, an it's efficiency not, thing, yeah, which is not Which is fine. Yeah. Um, one of the things it's worth noting um, is it's got a one liter three pot as a base engine, and 
it's only got 108 brake horsepower. Yeah, this is the thing that I think we can rightfully criticise this car on, and VW as a whole, because other rivals, not just Ford, which I know we have spoke about in the past, like Ford obviously have their base one litre eco boost with 125 brake and up to 140. Up to 140, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the first yeah. you can have it as 140 option. How on earth have you got a one litre turbo three pot thing with only 108 horsepower? In 2020. We, and in such a heavy car. Yeah, no, as in, I think 108 in a car like that, even if you're not a person who wants to drive particularly quickly. No, that will it's feel not slow. Enough. Well, I mean, as in, you know what it's like, um, it's more, de- you'll end up in a defensive driving situation, say on the motorway when you're merging or trying to overtake people because you haven't got the power to, you know, me- make it work. Yeah. So. And to be honest, I d- it's more a criticism on VW as a whole because... Everybody now, like Nissan are doing it, Honda are doing it, Vauxhall are doing it, Ford are doing it. While no one at the moment's really pushing out the same sort of power as the Fords because they do keep increasing it, they're not producing the power that they should be from that engine and they can still make them efficient as Ford have proved and we've proven on our road trip. So why not give it more power to je- to compensate for the extra weight? In a Polo, fair enough, or an up, yeah fair enough but the golf is quite a large heavy car oh yeah yeah i don't think that's right i think you'd probably more realistically be going for sort of the bigger engines so your 128 horsepower um versions or your two liters with 148 horsepower which even that's not really a lot from a two liter engine but that being said i think once you're up to 148 or whatever i think that is certainly enough power to sort of yeah get you about, if you mix it honest. with the automatic gearbox as well you're not yeah. faffing around with any of that yeah exactly you won't be dropping it down yeah. or whatever so, so you can yeah. probably do it and while yeah 148 is i'd probably say enough i think they are gonna save a lot of that for the gti exactly the, yeah it's and, worth, and the gte perhaps it's worth stating that this isn't the gti or the gte and that the three part will obviously be the entry level one i expect so yeah and it does while these prices aren't 100 percent confirmed and um, it's looking like it's going to start around twenty thousand five hundred pounds for the most basic car yeah now I've seen a lot of, I've watched quite a few review videos of this and I've read a few things online, things like that, and I've not seen anybody reviewing the most basic model. They've always had higher up models, which is annoying, and I know why Volkswagen do it, but it says prices from 20,500, but I actually want to know what you are getting for 20,500. Well, yeah, this is why we did some configurations on some of the rivals and we spec them out. Just yeah, assuming to, that the ones we've been talking about have been fully decked out. Ones. Yeah, because the, the well, to be fair, actually, one I I won't mention whose it was, but there was a review I watched, and it did specifically say that this is the old singing, old dancing, um, sort of version of the car, which has which did have the heads-up display, the big touchscreen, which I know will be standard, and all your heated seats, and yeah. your radar cruise, and, and all the that new stuff. voice control, and yeah, which like that. <laughs> interesting enough in the video did not work, but we'll gloss over that. It's obviously still in prototype mode. Yeah, I'm moment. sure updates will be released as it obviously gets yeah, more Yeah, it did make me laugh yeah. though, as just because it's funny that it was trying. It was on a test review and it didn't work. And anyway, that's by the by. But yeah, so roughly twenty thousand five hundred pound. We thought while this car's not actually out yet, and obviously we can compare stuff to the Mark Seven as well. Um, we we looked at some of the rivals and. I think once you start specking this golf up, I think you'll be looking towards thirty grand. Yeah, um, I mean that's not unrealistic, especially when you consider the current, that, one, the current one does. But also, you can, they can afford to do that when you look at once we decked out its rivals, they were all knocking on thirty grand as oh, well. Oh yeah, so the it's not like grand. it would be yeah. a stupid price to do that. So no, so the first one that we did look at comparing it to now, many reviews of the golf did say now it. While the old one was a fantastic car to drive, obviously with this being exactly the same chassis as the Mark 7, excuse me, we can go off that in a way of how it feels to drive. I gar- I'm fairly certain it'll still be good to drive. Yeah, well, yeah. the old one was, and it's the that, same That's what I mean, exactly. So I see no yeah. reason why it would be any worse. Now, a lot of the reviews I have watched, bear in mind, obviously, we haven't driven this car, so I can't give any sort of sense in what that is, but... From a lot of the reviews I've watched, most of them do say, while obviously it's much nicer inside and much more sort of better equipped on the higher end models, it wasn't as nice to drive as the new Focus. Okay. Just the driving element of it, not the interior luxury or anything like that, just to drive. 
yeah. it wasn't as nice. And that's usually the case with most of these. I know we are Ford owners and we sometimes might come across as a bit Ford bias, but genuinely they do tend to be the best to drive in their class. I think what often lets Ford down, though, particularly in our generation of the Fiesta, is the, the interior. interior. The interior yeah. has let them down. Yeah. yeah. Now, while that has been improved in the newer models, obviously, um, we can look at the old ones. So, the first one we're looking at is the Ford Focus. Now, the cars I say that we watched the reviews and read the reviews of did tend to mention they were the highest spec cars. Mm -hmm. So, we've done the same with the rivals to make it as fair as humanly possible. Um, so, the Focus, we did the Vignale, which is their luxury yeah version. that's their premium yeah. brand of yeah. their cars isn't it's it it's not yeah. the ST one or anything like that it no. is just the Vignale which is they're considered their luxury one so now, it's also worth stating as well obviously driving experience isn't really at the forefront of this particular model that we've spec'd here no now while the base price of the Vignale and it does come with a hell of a lot of extras as standard as the Vignale and it starts at 26,000 yeah which fair enough that's not that bad but we have fitted three and a half grand's worth of extras on it to get it up to, uh, well, 26,645 it started at, and we've got up to 30,065 pounds. And we're, we're really fully decked out. Yeah, this that. is literally every option ticked that we could find available on this car, shy of the extended warranty, but yeah. I don't think that counts as an extra. But and now, as far as the interior is concerned, where do you sit on it compared to the Golf? I don't mm, think it not, is yeah. quite as nice, actually. Don't get me wrong, it's nowhere near as nice. I will happily hold my hand up on that. It's got the wooden dash, which I do, I do like. like. We, we've both, actually, we've both sat in Vignales before and we've both commented yeah. that we did like the wooden dash. Wooden dash, very nice. The Windsor leather on the seats, very nice Indeed. and very plush to sit on. Lovely. Um, it's got all the standard things you'd expect. Obviously, the big screen in the middle with your Apple Car players and all that kind of stuff. It's and got a leather. It's got a leather dashboard. Leather dashboard, which point. again, yeah. no, it has all the way up to the most halfway yeah. up there. So it's got uh, again wooden the side panels. And, it's got. Actually, do you notice a bit of Mustang as far as the oh, styling's yeah. concerned yeah, yeah. in there? Yeah, in, 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 in the vents the the and the yeah. way the dashboard works. Yeah. So that's pretty very cool. much so. It's got. Uh, it's got your, your climate, dual zone climate control, which you'd expect, uh, heated seats, heated steering wheels, your Bang & Olufsen stereo. Heads up display. Uh, the, yeah, heads up display on the Focus. It does actually have it. I can see it there, which the Golf also has. And, and it's actually put across as a big selling point. This has it too. Now, something that does, I'd say, date the car a little bit is it does have analog dials. Yeah. Yeah, it does have analog dials and a screen in the middle, which does surprise me because on the Fiesta, which came out before this, you can have a digital dash. Fully digital? It's got physical... This is actually... This is where yeah, because this, this is the thing. It's got physical... Yeah, yeah. Which this might be. It's got physical yeah. sticks, as in the actual dial itself is physical, but yeah. the actual display is digital well we to be fair from these pictures we can't actually no we'll have to go in we'll case. have to go actually have a look at one they definitely have them in the dealership yeah. so we can go however and if that's the case and you do have physical sort of analog dials over a digital background i'm struggling to see the point i am also because I don't, bmw it, did it for a long time and i did question what's the point but the mean is in because that just limits you to still having the same style of uh, sort of read out the whole point in having a fully digital display is that you, you can change can, it you can customize it to whatever suits you yeah. best right so yeah that's a criticism definitely that however, that is the case however it doesn't look bad no it doesn't um, and obviously I could probably say most of the people who are going to buy this car probably won't care but it's something that I would look at. One thing we have noticed since sitting in the new Focus, though, is um, the doors are very lightweight and a little bit... <laughs> to be fair, I have now been in a couple since. Yeah. I didn't see the same issue. Did you not see it the I same? I did not see the same issue. Okay. That could have very well just been an early... Because it was very, very early on when we did that. Right. Um, and it, does, it didn't have the same problem. One thing I will definitely say on it, we have selected the manual, not the automatic. Now, obviously, that just comes down to preference extremely good um, gear throws on it. Ford are known for that. They right? are known for that, yeah. and I'll credit where it's due. That was amazing. Comfy seats. I can't complain about the seats. They were very comfortable. Uh, Looks-wise, again, I do prefer the Focus over the Golf. I think it is a little bit more... Um, it's Actually, the word for it, I think it's a bit more elegant. Yeah. Now, this is, again, this is the thing. When this first came out, I didn't like it. I genuinely didn't like the new Focus when it came out, but the more I've seen it now, and especially now you start to get them in the ST line model in particular. Yes, the ST line in ST blue. Wow. Yeah, it looks really great. Good really good looking car. Really good looking car. Can't knock it on that. However, I will say, I think of all the interiors that they offer, I think the Vignali, I like the most. Oh, yeah, well, that's the point of it. No, but I mean, as in, I, I think they've... 
I'm not going to lie, when I, obviously I was talking to one of the guys and he said, obviously, the Vignal is their more premium brand. And I was wondering initially, what's the point? But since being in one and since, obviously, the way we've spec'd it like we have now, I've realised the point. Yeah, and as I, in, I, when I took my car in for the service, I actually got a Fiesta Vignale as a courtesy car. Similar sort of feel, was it? It's, it? Well, it's the same screen as they put in the new one, but it's like, it just didn't have the wood, which I think is more for the upmarket focus because it's a bigger, more family-oriented car. Sure. But, yeah, very nice, Very everything felt plush. Yeah. Plush. Um, and the Fiesta interior has always been, I thought, better quality than the Focus, even though it's the cheaper car. Okay, I can certainly see the logic in this one. Yeah, yeah, definitely see the logic. It is an absolute rival for the Golf. Yes, 100%. Well, it pricing always gets wise, co- yeah. Yeah. Pricing wise for this one in particular, and it always gets compared to the Focus and the Golf. Well, base models of this start from roughly the same prices as yeah, what Yeah, it's about 20,000... 600 and something was it so, on this so for yeah. a future episode something that we probably should do is a base model battle yeah where we go for the bog or base yeah. what of do rivals. you get what it? do you get yeah. for your books so we'll, do that. we'll, do, yeah, that we'll do that next we'll time. do that next time so that's actually good so another one that again always seems to get mentioned in this sort of field and i can see why particularly on the pricing front is the Vauxhall astra now, driving dynamics aside because I've, I've driven a few of these because they have them as work fleet cars to drive, appalling. I Not, think yeah. we need to take ourselves out of that mindset. Yeah. And the cars we're going up against each other aren't really for driving no, dynamics. No, they're, they're not. Then that's not what so, we're going yeah, for. Yeah, I'm going to try and discount that. But having driven it, it is appalling. But I will put that to the back of my head. So for this one, we were looking at the uh, as I said, the, the newest version, Astra. So we're looking at the Ultimate Nav, which is their top end model that we looked at which starts at twenty six thousand seven hundred and fifty five pounds so again compared to the top end model of the focus it's actually more it's che- is it no, actually more? actually was more the top end ford focus started at well for the for the vignali one anyway it was twenty six six four five whereas the um twenty six seven twenty six seven five so right. it's actually a hundred and something pounds oh, that's negative however what we might add is for what the options that Vauxhall offer you get most of those on there chucked in for that yeah. price yeah we went to be fair when we were looking through the options there weren't that much you could take but the options they were specifying as standard were stuff that i'd be worried if they didn't have it on the most basic model i'm fairly certain all to all of them will rattle those off or won't they yeah like oh i've got an adjustable steering rack okay. i saw fixed bars yeah i saw fixed seating thing well that's been a thing since like 1998 but we'll gloss over that and um, okay well then given that this is more of an interior battle and spec battle what do you make of the interior genuinely don't mind it no, neither do I. Genuinely don't mind it. I don't think it holds up as well compared to the... I think it's third out of the Golf yeah. and the Focus Vignale. However, one thing, this is this is a personal preference. I know some people don't mind it. My first pro- I first came across the problem on Mercedes cars with the screen just stuck on like an iPad. It's yes, like an iPad stuck on a thing. On and the Ford has done that, and that's the one criticism I will have. I personally prefer it when it's built into the dash like it is on the Golf and on this. It's a sleeker design, isn't it? It is. I think the idea behind it is, and from a safety point of view, I get it, because you're not looking down, you're looking... Just straight, straight on across. to the left, aren't you? From yeah. a safety point of view, I get it, but from an aesthetic design point of view, nah, I pr- much prefer it built into the sort of dashboard like these are. Now, again... Having been in the interior of this and had a chance to sort of drive it and be in it, the interior does feel extraordinarily cheap. Right. It wasn't the ultimate version like this, but the materials looks very similar on this than it does on the one I was But I might add as well, if you look at, say, the dashboard, the sort of plastic effect that goes across it doesn't look as nice as the sort of fall wood effect that you get in the Yeah, or the, the aluminium example. on the Golf and exactly, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a leather dash at the top. It is plastic. And yeah. I don't think it has heads-up display either. It definitely does not have heads-up display. And I think this is a bit of... A, at best, this looks like a half and half digital to analogue display. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they are analogue on that. It does come with leather seats, which you'd expect. It has heated steering wheel, heated seats again, but you are going for the ultimate the ultimate top versions that should have it these should options have these on it, that, like, yeah. as standard. We have on this one in particular, just because we were get, um, sort of getting it up, we're spec them all up as high as we could now we only managed to get 855 pounds worth of options on this which we added the uh and to be fair 260 of those pounds a dash with a dash cam which i think you'd have to be a bit daft to spend that when you get them from 20 quid of amazon and it's the same one um voxel connect as well so you can get help 
Um, should you need it? Yeah, that's four hundred and fifteen pounds. But I don't get why you wouldn't just spend thirty quid on an AA membership and have that. And um, amazing, like despite this being the top spec, you could you'd have to spec front fog lights. Yeah, front fog lights were on an your extra. ultimate. Yeah, and they were hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah, I don't really understand that. No, I don't. I'm pretty. You might. They might be. I don't know. LED. And I might add. Lights. Maybe you had to. Maybe we had to add those onto the Ford as well. I'm not we certain. Didn't. But we did not. They come as standard on the Ford. <laughs> but that's by the by. But total absolute kitted out. Vauxhall Astra came to £27,610. Now, while I would actually consider the Vauxhall Connect and the dash cam not an option in a way, because it's not actually... Well, it's only not one that I would be picking. Well, they're not part of the car. The fog lights are an actual feature within the car. The dash cam is still an external thing plugged in, and the Vauxhall Connect is just so you can call Vauxhall 24-7 if you break down, which... If, well, I don't know why that's £415 when you get an AA membership for 30, 40 quid. And a phone. And a phone, which you already have. Which, anyway. But yeah, so it comes to £27,610. Now, the engine on this one in particular, was it the one point? Uh, it was the 1.2 with 145 horsepower. Yeah, which I, that's not that bad. No, it's not. But at the same token, when you compare that to the one litre Eco Boost that. 140. 140. But they, they didn't offer that in the Vignali, though, I don't think. They didn't, but it is an option on the Focus. So maybe if you're actually in a dealership and not on their website, you could probably have it. Because I know you can do more when you're there in person on the website. Exterior, um, I don't mind the look of the Astra, I've got to be honest. It's, it, non, it's, it's nondescript. It's not offensive. It? It's, it's not offensive. Yeah, it's not it's bad. Nondescript. It's just a car. Um, I think my favourite to look at to look at from the exterior point of view is the focus out of the three. Agreed. Best interior golf. Agreed. Um worst definitely, definitely is the Astra. I can't deny that. But we are gonna look at one more car later on, but I can't see how that would Yeah. Could be any worse than this. Um yeah. As a car, it's cheaper, but then again, you don't get as much. Yeah. Uh, it. But yeah. And it def driving dynamics is that something you care about? You won't be picking this. So, the next two we're going to look at is sort of your more premium ends again to match the Volkswagen, like the Ford and the Astra. They're not premium brands. No. Let's not beat around the bush. They're not. Whereas VW, um, we're we, we're going to look at Audi A3, but that is the same as the Golf, so it's pointless. Um, and then we're going to look at the new one series. Mm -hmm. So the new one series. Do you like the look of it? Yes or no? No. No. Same Same with me. They Do you like that it's front-wheel drive? I mean, as a personal point of view, that doesn't bother me because I don't... I have front-wheel drive cars and it's just a thing. For a BMW fan and as for a BMW, I understand why people are annoyed. BMW should be rear-wheel drive. That was their selling factor. Yeah. No, I think that's the thing. Um, we both mentioned this about the One Series as well, didn't we, previously, mm -hmm. which is... I think it's lost some of its uniqueness that people would have gone to the One Series for compared to some of the rivals, which was yeah. the fact that despite it being your sort of little hatchback or whatever, it came mm -hmm. with a particular... You could buy it with a straight six and rear-wheel drive. Yeah, but now, I, I know the straight six is yesteryear, yeah. but... Well, no, to be fair, you can still, you still get it in this. The M135 version of this has that same engine. Really? Yeah. Um, I have driven the M140, the previous one. Obviously, my friend's got one. I've driven it quite a few times. To drive, it's not that bad, but the interior on the old one series was awful. It was just awful. The materials didn't feel expensive. The infotainment system, shocking. There was nothing in it feature-wise, and this is stuck in 35 grand car. Yeah. There's nothing in it. But the new one, I think it's where we stepped up. So what we tried to do with this one, we, had, we were trying to keep it fair price-wise, so we did start at the base SE model. Yeah. Because... While that doesn't sound fair that we're comparing it, price-wise, this is what you're comparing it to. So it starts from £24,430 for the SE, which is two grand cheaper than the Ford and the Astra. Yeah. But bear in mind, they were both the top-spec version. Exactly, yeah, that's the thing. When you wait, if you're going for the top-spec version of mm. the One Series, you're going to be over. Way, way over. You're so going to be way over. Looking so so yeah. we looked at the SE model, which is the basic one, and... It turns out that comes with literally nothing. So we had to add extras to it. We did. So what we did, we did add quite a few extras on it. And 
the engine it came with, we picked the petrol engine. We don't know the literage of it because it's just called the 118i, which normally would mean 1.8, but with the naming conventions these days, I don't think it is a 1.8. And I'm certainly hoping it's not because 140 no. brake horsepower from a 1.8 doesn't seem... No, I would suspect it's either a 1 or a 1.5 just yeah. from things, but... BMW's website does not state what engine size it is, which is a massive flaw in their Considering that they're there. meant to be the driver's choice as well, you'd think that people would want to know yeah, that. Yeah, it does not state the engine size, which is a huge flaw in their thing. So we don't know. End of story, we don't know. It's 140 horsepower, which again, for a car this heavy and this big, probably not too bad. No. A bit more than the Golf, but the 148 version, you get the Golf. We didn't pick any options in terms of paint. We went for the extra alloy wheels, which are the 17-inch ones, because the standard ones are horrific. Um, that adds £495 to the cost. Now, interior-wise, we do get a full digital display. We do. And we no, do no, we, get... ha we have selected the technology pack, though. So yeah, we, 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 we have to, we've selected the technology pack, so we do know that we get the full digital yeah. display. We've picked the leather seats for yep. 1150 which the others all had, so we're just trying to match it up to the spec of what you got on the old one, of the other ones. Yep. Um, the infotainment system doesn't look that bad, actually. I think this is a nice halfway... No, no do you know the, what? The one thing they, do, they don't do so bad, the iDrive system is never that bad. Do you know, and I might add as well, this is a nice halfway house between the two. So it's not quite as low down as the built into the dashboard systems. No. But it's not quite as prominently stuck on as, say, the Focus Yes, yeah. because in the, in the old one series, it is just stuck on the dash. Yeah. And they've obviously... This is more integrated, yeah, they've obviously taken it? note of that and thought, right, we can do this better. And they have credit where it's due. Yeah, it they looks have, good, They have it? made that better. Um, we've gone for the quartz silver matte interior trim, which yep. is just the place where the wood is on the Focus, so just along the dash. That is a free option, so we thought, why not? Um, we've gone for the comfort pack, which includes um, sort of your electric front seats. It's got um, uh, your boot lid, op uh, electric boot lid, mm -hmm. pointless option. I don't know why they even fit them on cars when you can just pull it with your hand in two seconds. Uh, what else has it got? It's got a few other random bits and bobs you sort of just steel uh wheel the bottom of the steering wheel is in steel yep it's got a heated it's got a heated, heated, wheel, as heated well, yeah. wheel as well which again is, is available on the others so we had to put that on to make it match the spec of the others uh, and we have gone for the technology pack as well which does come with the um harman Kardon stereo Okay. So the, again, they all have the so the Vauxhall one had the Bose system. Yeah. The Ford had the Bang and Olufsen. The BMW has the Harman Kardon, and I don't know what the VW so, had. To be fair, all good sound systems. Yeah. None of them are going to be terrible. No. Are they? All all good, well-renowned names. Uh, it's also got the um, uh, so your live cockpit professional thing, which is a bigger display. So your ten point two five inch instrument display. So that is, that is your digital dash. Yeah. That is an optional extra on the BMW, whereas I'm pretty sure it is standard on the Golf. Okay. So, again, you can criticise for that should you wish, but I wouldn't really do that. Uh, what else did we get? It's got um, BMW Weather, not that you'd need that. We also picked the heads-up display on this as well. Because, again, it's to match what yeah, so the, the other the ones Focus have. The Focus and the Golf both had a heads-up display, so we yeah. put that on to match it. Now, all in, with all these extras on it, it came out at £31,125. So it, to be fair, and I want to make this fair by saying that you could... It, I think if you move, you could remove a few of these options that really aren't that necessary and you could get it down to the price of a fully decked out Focus, for yeah, example. but you are then getting less. I don't know, though. I don't think the Focus had some of these things in there. I think if you took a couple of the less significant options off this... And it came out as around thirty grand compared to the thirty grand Velar. It's a tough call between the two. Yeah, it is. The Ford did have things like self parking and front and rear cameras and all that kind of gubbins and all the parking okay. sensors. Where I don't know if this had. I think it has front and rear parking sensors because they're mainly standard now. You don't need the Wi-Fi hotspot. That's why I think this is. I think this is actually a lot closer than either of us expected. It is, but when you when you get it up to the same amount of things on it as the focus so the same sort of stuff on it for 31 grand yeah probably not that bad it is like you say a di it is a direct competitor will it drive as well probably not and i've seen quite a few reviews that do say that and confirm that yep. 
I mean, if if you are a person who does care about brand, though, you're winning yourself a lot more with the beam. Yeah, obviously, other people will hate you for it. Sure, but I mean, but it, as a brand, as a brand, it is yeah. a more premium sort of number. And yeah, no, I was actually quite surprised that it came in at a, such a reasonable price. Obviously, it, we has we it have is stated their base the model. is the SE and it is the base model. But and we've we ticked did, all the extras. But we have ticked a lot of extras here. Yeah, so it has actually had added. Um, about six thousand pounds onto the price. Yes. Um, which yeah, is a lot of money. Um, I assume if you get the next model up Things um, really start to ramp up. It does the price does really start to sort of come up. But for the what we're comparing it to, thirty one grand it does put it in this ballpark. You do get a lot of tech and a lot of stuff for your money, and you say you do get the premium badge. Personally I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. I don't think it looks nice at all. But the interior wise, spot on. Oh. Yeah, no, exactly. I can't really fault yeah. the interior. Interior wise, spot on. I think it looks brilliant, actually. Yeah. I will say that it's a huge. Something. It's gone from something I really didn't like to something I really do like. Yeah, the, the old One Series interior is appalling, but they've upped the game. Fair enough. Credit where it's due. They've done a good job. Now, one thing I was at the top of the higher end, the 135 ones and things like that, they are four wheel drive, actually. Oh. So they used to be rear wheel drive, then now four wheel drive. Whether okay. it's rear bias or not, I'm not sure, but I don't think it is. Um, but yeah, that's the one series. The next one we're going to look at is probably the obvious one from the premium side is the Mercedes A Class. We were both surprised at how well it came, it started for the base model uh, a couple of grand cheaper than the one series. Yes, yes, it did. However, I don't know if it's just their website or it's having it because it did come up with a few errors. We didn't seem to be able to select any options. Yeah, it was weird, wasn't it? Which was a bit strange. I think that could just be an issue on their website, so this might actually be a bit of an unfair thing. But So what we had to do was we had to go up the model range a little bit um, just to get something a bit more equivalent to the base price. So remember, the Focus started at 26. Um, the Astra was, I think, 26.7. Yeah, 26. The mm -hmm. Golf was 20-something. So... Uh, we found one here that starts at 25.7, which is as close to we could get realistically. Um, but we have actually put a few extras on it in a way. We've gone to the six speed manual, 134 mile an hour top speed, 1.4 litre engine, uh, four cylinder. Um, does it have the power? Yeah, 136 horsepower. 136 horsepower. Yeah, so power. it is a little down on power. It is a little bad. down on power. Looks wise, I actually do not mind the new A class. It's non descriptive isn't it? So it's I think very... it's better looking than the outgoing one. Oh, yeah, better looking than the outgoing one, but again, it is just very bland. Yeah. Until you sort of get to the AMG sort of level ones, it's a very bland looking car. Interior wise, though, big step up from the old one, 100%, because yeah. it has the big screens across the. You see, this is the thing, though, because it is a big step up from the old one. No, make no mods about it, but I prefer the BMW's new interior. Yeah, I don't. I like the fact that you still get the wheel. Yeah. So we'll get we'll here we go. Right. See now I well, suppose you do you do still get the selector thing, don't you? You, you to do, be fair. but I think yeah. it's touch. But I, I prefer that that personally. I I think that the I don't like the display cluster behind the steering wheel. It looks just stuck on. Well it is. It's just, obviously it's a massive. It's better than the old one. It's better. It's better than the old, one, but it does fair just look like a huge long tablet that's been knocked on its end and just sort of stuck in there. Yeah, I can see why you wouldn't. Pers I don't mind it personally, but I think I've just because on the Mercedes ones, I've had such a bad expectation of the old interiors, which are dreadful. I think that is a big step up. Oh no, and I also love the uh, new steering wheel design as well. Yeah. Particularly when you, I think it's in the AMG models where you get that like billet aluminium sort of touch on the yeah. buttons. Now, yeah. Now the one thing I will credit BMW for on this is having we have been in quite a few Mercedes. They always get credited for having amazing interiors and amazing materials, but they're actually not. If you honestly look around, you can see a lot of plastic. You can feel a lot of cheap plastic in these places your eyes don't necessarily look. BMW don't do that. BMW have decent materials the whole way around. And that's coming from someone who hates a BMW. I'll give them credit for that. And Mercedes do need to up their game. Audi don't do it either. I must admit, the styling... Hmm, doesn't really work for me. Doesn't work for you. No. But I, again, I personally quite don't mind it. To the point where I prefer the interior styling of the Focus. 
Mm, yeah, I think the actual and the vignali in particular. The yeah, I'm the talking about the vignali. Yeah, the materials yeah, are, the vignali. are a bit nicer. But but I mean, as in just not necessarily the materials. I'm just talking about the styling of the way that everything's yeah. laid out. I suppose obviously everything is personal in what you do prefer. I personally prefer the screen on this because it, while it is just stuck on, the dashboard behind it comes up just enough to make it look like it's part of it. Yeah, no, Whereas I understand it, that. That yeah. does not happen on the Focus. Is it? I prefer the BMW's one because it's more integrated. Yeah. And outright, just prefer the Golf one completely. Oh yeah, and the Golf is, one. And you might, in- yeah, because since that's the beginning of all this topic, the Golf one just I think it looks the best out of the bunch on yeah. the screen, sort of. All right then, I think we are gonna. Have to yeah, we're gonna wrap, have to. We're wrap just gonna that, wrap yeah. that up there. Um, we were gonna talk about another one, which was the uh, sort of SUV craze, but we will do that in another in the uh, following episode, um, just to do that one. Um, but again, if you think we've missed any of the rivals for these cars, probably have. Uh, in, uh, just looking at it or if you again any topics you want us to discuss hit us up in the comments below all the links are obviously as always down there uh, and and keep in touch and we will see you next week for another episode yeah see you later see you later bye bye